Hello, my lovely viewers. You are welcome again to another Kavdo ICT lessons. My name is Ernest Ato Bento. Viewers, in the last lesson, we looked at the main components of the computer system. The main components of the computer system. And we talked about hardware and software as the main component of the computer system. In the hardware, we looked at devices that falls under hardware components. We talked about input devices, output devices, storage devices, communication devices, as well as ancillary devices. Today we are going to look at one of the groups of hardware components of the computer system. So viewers, the topic for today is on input devices. Input devices. And you know that input devices are one of the components that falls under the hardware component of the computer system. But before we move on to today's business, let's mark the homework or the assignment you were given the last time. One, explain the following terms. And the first one is computer hardware. And the, when we talk about computer hardware, this is the physical components that make up the computer system. As we said, when we hear the word physical, it means that you can see that thing, you can touch that thing. So the computer hardware is the physical component that make up the computer system. The second one is computer software. And this refers to all the programs that run on the computer system. All the programs that run on the computer system. Two. Give two groups of hardware devices. You, you were to give two groups of hardware devices. So we have input devices, output devices, storage devices. So any of these two answers are correct. And then the third one, mention the two types of software. Mention the two types of software. And also we have system software. That is the main software on the system and then the application software. Viewers, I believe you all had the answers to these questions right. Now let's move to today's topic on input devices. But let's first of all look at our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain what input is. You'll be able to explain what input is. Two, explain what pointing input devices are. Explain what pointing input devices are. And then the third one, give four examples of pointing input devices. Give four examples of pointing input devices. Four, mention three functions of pointing input devices. So if you all go through this lesson, at the end of the lesson, You'll be able to explain what input is, explain what pointing input devices are, give four examples of pointing input devices, and then mention three functions of pointing input devices. Good. Now let's be, let's all begin the lesson. What is an input? What is an input? We are talking about computers. Let's shift from computers and come to we humans. If I'm thirsty, if I'm thirsty, it means my body needs water. How can I get this water into my system? How I will get the water into my system is what is referred to in computers as input. So how you put something into the computer it's what you call input. So if I'm thirsty, how would the water get to my body? Either I drink it from a cup or I drink it from a, a, any bottle or I drink it using straw. I can also drink the water using a bowl. Some even drink the water using a calabash. So all these things that can help us take in the water. In IT, that is what we call input devices. 
and the water that we are putting into our system is the input. So in the same way, when we come to computers, what is an input? What is an input? They are things that we put into data or instructions that we put into the computer for processing. So input is any data or instructions entered into the memory of a computer. As you see on the screen, you see that this person is typing. So whatever the person is feeding into the computer, this is what we call input. So the test you see here is what we call input. So today we are going to look at the devices that help us to put data and instructions into the memory of a computer. So what is an input device? What is a, right now we know what input is. They are data and instructions that we feed into the computer for further processing. So what is an input device? An input device is any hardware component that allows a user to enter data or instructions into a computer. If you go back to the example I gave with the water, so a cup allows a user to take in water. In the same way, input devices allows a user to enter information or data or instructions into a computer system. So today we are going to look at some of these devices. An input device also allows you to interact with the computer and control it. So there are, there are categories of input devices. One will help you to put data or instructions into the computer. Another one helps you to interact and control the computer. The most popular input devices on a computer are the keyboard and mouse. They are the most popular input devices that we can find. Now let's get to the types of input devices. Types of input devices. There are two groups of input devices and these are pointing devices and data entry devices. There are two groups of input devices and these are pointing devices and data entry devices. So let's look at what they are. Pointing input devices. A pointing input device is an input device that allows a user to interact with a computer by moving a pointer on a screen to select icons and trigger desired actions. So if you look on your screen, you can see a pointer here. You can see this pointer. So when we talk about pointing input devices, they control the pointer on a screen. They control a pointer on a screen. And this pointer will allow you to select icons and other things to trigger certain actions. So without this pointer, how will I be able to interact with my computer? How will I, will I be able to choose certain options on the computer? So this group of input devices helps you to move the pointer on the screen to select other icons and then trigger desired actions. So in this lesson, we are going to look at various forms of pointing input device. And in our last, next lesson, you will look at the data entry devices. So today we are going to look at the various examples of pointing input devices. So let's look at the examples. The first one is the mouse. The first one is the mouse. And I believe most of our viewers are familiar with the mouse. This is not the animal mouse, but a computer mouse. Viewers, the word mouse is an acronym. So today we are going to look at the meaning of the M-O-U-S-E that comes together to form the word mouse. So viewers, mouse, the acronym mouse stands for manually 
operated user selection equipment manually operated user selection equipment that is the full meaning of the acronym mouse so the mouse stands for manually operated user selection equipment and this mouse is an equipment attached to a computer system and works as a pointer or a cursor in a computer so this mouse controls the pointer on the screen and when you are at a typing area the mouse pointer will change into a cursor a blinking cursor that allows you to input tests so this mouse is a pointing input device and it works as a pointer and a cursor in a computer the mouse is the major pointing device for the desktop computer we went through forms of personal computers and desktops are one of them so we are saying that the mouse here is the major pointing device for the desktop computer so without this mouse it will be very uncomfortable to operate this computer though you can use the keyboard at, at times but the mouse will make things easy and flexible for you when you are interacting with your computer so the mouse is the major pointing device for the desktop computer we said not quite long ago that the most common or the popular input devices are the mouse and the keyboard and the mouse here is the major pointing device for the desktop computer the second pointing input device we are looking at is the touchpad US where can you find this pointing device on which machine or on which personal computer can you find this example of pointing input device this is called a touchpad or a track pad it is called a touchpad or a trackpad and it's a flat control surface with buttons used to move the cursor and perform other functions on a computer so it also functions like the mouse but this is fixed inside a particular personal computer the touchpad is the major pointing device for laptop and notebook computers so you see it down here you see it down here so this pointing device comes with laptop or netbook computers if you look here you see that if you want to move the pointer you just move your hands here and the pointer on the screen will be moving so when it get to the desired place or desired position that you want to select then you choose this is the left button this is the right button just like the mouse just like the mouse and then you click here to choose or select what you want to do so the trackpad or the touchpad is found on laptop and netbook computers so it's a pointing device the major pointing device though when you are using a laptop some people are not comfortable with the touchpad so you can connect an external mouse to your laptop to use and it will still work so you can either use the touchpad or you can connect an external mouse through the USB so that you can use it if you are not comfortable with the use of the touchpad but the touchpad is the major pointing device for laptop and netbook computers let's look at another pointing device you call this a pointing stick a pointing stick or track point and let's look at where they are found a pointing stick is a device that resembles a pencil eraser and this is primarily used in some laptops as a pointing device so all the examples that we are seeing 
they help us to control the pointer on the screen so that we can interact better with that personal computer and this is one of them the pointing stick we call this the pointing stick and this is how it looks like and it is also a pointing device do all machines come with this let's look at machines that come with this pointing stick if you look at this keyboard this is a laptop keyboard laptop keyboard and we normally find this on Lenovo you can find them on some Lenovo computers or Dell computers they have this pointing device it is located on the keyboard generally between the G H and B keys so we have the G H and B keys and you find this in the middle this pointing stick here and you see that you have your left button and then you have your right button here so you use your finger to move to direct the pointer on the screen and then when it get to the desired place you use the left button to click or the right button also to click so you use this to move the pointer you just put your hand on and then be moving it and then it will, when it gets to the right place then you use these two buttons to click to perform the action that you want to do so this normally comes with laptops and then you find them between the GH and the B keys and it's also a pointing device called the pointing stick or the track point so this also helps you to interact with the computer as well as control the pointer on your screen the next one is trackball trackball so viewers know that all the examples that we are looking at they help us to control the pointer on the screen and then interact with the computer interact with the computer and the next one is a trackball trackball when you look at this trackball it resembles a mouse it resembles a mouse I always tell my student that if you go to exam and then you see this you must be able to differentiate it from the mouse and we are going to look at it a trackball is a pointing device that works like a mouse with a ball on top of the device so a trackball is just like a mouse but the difference is that the trackball has a ball on top of the device so this is a mouse we have turned it upside down this is a mouse and there is a trackball what will help us to differentiate between a mouse and then a trackball with the trackball the ball is visible you can see the ball the ball is visible but when it comes to a mouse the ball is under the mouse so when you turn the mouse to its original position you will not be able to see the ball when the mouse is on the table so the difference is that with the trackball the ball is visible but with the mouse it is under so when you look at it you will not be able to find the ball unless you take the mouse and then turn it upside down before you can see the ball these days these mechanical mouse we call this mouse mechanical mouse these mouse are being replaced by laser most mouse today operates by laser you see a light here instead of the ball but when you are comparing a trackball and the mouse with the trackball the ball is visible either on top or on side like this and then with the mouse the ball is under so if you go to any exam you see a device like this and the ball is visible you can see the ball as part of the mouse at, as it is placed on a mat or a table then this is a trackball but if you see only the buttons and then the screw wheel here then that is a mouse With the trackball, the user controls the pointer on the screen by rotating the ball with their hand. 
so when it comes to how the trackball is used this is a mouse this is a mouse and the mouse as you say all the examples that we are looking at helps you to control the pointer this is the pointer on the screen so before a pointer on a screen can move when you are using a mouse it means you have to move the mouse see how this hand is moving the mouse so as the hand moves left the pointer also moves left if it moves right it also moves right so before a pointer can move when you are using a mouse then the mouse must move before the pointer can move but when you come to a trackball the mouse or the trackball is stationary is at one place and then you just rotate your finger on the ball you take uh, just rotate the ball with your finger and then the pointer will move so that's the difference for the pointer to move if you are using a mouse because the ball is under you have to move the mouse before the ball moves before the pointer also can move on your screen but when you are using a trackball the trackball is stationary it's at one place and you just use your finger to rotate or your thumb to rotate the ball and the pointer will move so the difference between these two devices is how the ball is moved one is stationary and the ball can move one the device must move before the pointer can move so that's the difference so the user controls the pointer on the screen by rotating the ball with their hand as you see here but with the mouse it moves and then when it gets to the desired position you either left click or you right click but with this you just rotate the ball with your thumb off and then when it gets to the desired position you just left click or right click now let's get to the next one joystick 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 has similar functions as the mouse and the trackball so the device you see here these devices are called joystick these devices are called joystick and they function similarly like the mouse and the trackball by gripping the stick a pointer on the screen can be moved or controlled so if i want to move a pointer on the screen i have to grip this stick or hold this stick and then by moving it the pointer can move the same applies to this one if i hold this stick and then move it the pointer on the screen can also move so where are these devices used joystick also contain buttons that are used to make various selections and they are used in computer games and flight simulations they are used in computer games and flight simulations anytime you, you hear the word simulation it means something that imitates the real world activity so flight simulations they use it when people want to learn or pilot wants to learn how to fly an aircraft they use this joystick as part of their training they use this in their flight simulations to learn how to fly an aircraft so they are used in computer games and fly simulations as well so these are called joysticks I remember it came to one of the exam and then some of the kids were writing car gear this is not a car gear it's a joystick and the car gear was one of the answers or some of the answers the students were giving so this is a joystick not a car gear the next one is gamepad gamepad i believe some of you are familiar with this gamepad and a gamepad is also an input device that you hold to move objects in computer games they are normally used in computer games and we call this device gamepad gamepad so you see this person playing a game using the game pad the next one is stylus stylus 
Stylus is also called a pen and is a pointing device used with full screen mobile phones and tablets. So some tablets and uh, tablets and then some smartphones use stylus as a pointer to interact with the device. So if you are using one, the name is stylus and it can also be called a pen. You also have light pen, light pen. And a light pen is a light sensitive pointing input device commonly used to select or modify text or data on a screen. So you can use this to modify text or data on a screen. So you connect this and you use it directly on your screen. So as you see it here, as you see it here. And this light pen is normally used with a CRT monitor. They are normally used with a CRT monitor. That's a CRT monitor. These days, all the monitors are flat panel displays. You have the LCD and LEDs. But this light pen was normally used with CRT monitors. And they are used to manipulate or highlight data on the screen. And this is called a light pen. A light pen. You also have light gun, light gun, and light gun. This is a device used mainly in computer games. So you connect it and then you use it in computer games. So if you are using this kind of gun in your computer game, you call it light gun. They help you to interact with the computer, especially in games that are played on the computer. We also have remote control. Remote control. We are all familiar with remote control these days. Our television, our audio systems, our decoders, they are all using air conditions, they are all using remote control. The remote control is used to control the operation of other devices at a distance using infrared signals. They also help you to interact, to change the channel, to increase the volume, to mute, and then other functions as well. To select the source if you want to connect any other media. And they are also input devices that help us to interact with our system. This one too is called a laser pointer. A laser pointer and we normally use them in presentations it helps you to move back and forth when you are presenting this is a pointing device that emits intense light beam of light used to direct attention during presentation what you see on the screen this red pointer that you see moving on the screen is emitted by a laser pointer so if I'm presenting, as I'm presenting to you, and I want to highlight something to you, like me highlighting this laser pointer, then I press a knob here, and then it will give me this laser pointer for me to highlight certain things to my audience. If I want to move to the next slide or page in my presentation, I press here. If I want to move back, I press here. So this laser pointer helps you to interact with your slides or your presentation notes when you are presenting to a group of people. And it is also a pointing device. It helps you to interact with whatever you are doing on the computer. Good. Viewers, we have come to the examples. We have come to the end of the examples of pointing input devices. We looked at the mouse, the joystick, and the rest. Now let's look at the functions they play. The functions they play in the computer system. One, we use the pointing input devices to choose menus. So assuming I have this program on my machine, what we call menu is the file, edit, insert, and the rest. They are called menu. 
so we use the pointing devices to choose menu items without this pointing device how can i click on file or edit and then choose any other command here so the pointing device controls the pointer there's the pointer you see the pointer on the screen and it helps us to choose menu items two for pressing on screen buttons in a dialog box this is a dialog box the box you see here is a dialog box and it's an alert dialog example so these are buttons can't say and then we have yes we have no so these are buttons so we use the pointing input devices to choose or press buttons in a dialog box three for selecting group of words in a document so there's a document and i use a pointing device you see if the pointer comes to a typing area it changes to a kaza and we use it or insertion point and we use it to select test maybe we want to delete this test we want to increase the size of this test we want to change the color of this test so we use to select words that is what the input the pointing input devices help us to do to select a group of words in a document as you see these were selected if we select a test, that test is covered by a blue background. A blue background. That means we have selected the test. We also use it to point objects. So this is the pointer. So you can point to videos, you can point to documents, you can point to downloads. You can point and then choose to give you the desired action. So for pointing objects. You can also use it to select and resize objects. So if I select an object, you see this dotted border around it. That means that I've selected it. I've selected this one. I've selected this one. And I can use it to resize also. I can use it to resize also. So if I make it bigger or smaller, that is resizing. Bigger that smaller that is resizing so we can use it to resize objects select object even move objects we also use it for creating drawings and graphical shapes as you see we use it to create drawings and graphical shapes we can use it to draw normally when you get uh, you are using Microsoft paint you can use the pointer the pointer will assist you to draw various shapes or images so for creating drawings and graphical shapes and then we also use it to execute or activate commands execute or activate command so look at this dialog box here you have to reply either by clicking yes or no yes or no for a desired action to be performed so if i click on yes or if i click on no I'm activating that command. I'm activating that command. And I, if I activate it, it will execute whatever I want it to do. Good. And we also use it to drag objects. You see, this is the pointer. You click and then you can move around. And moving around is what we call dragging. Moving around is what we call dragging. So we can use it to drag objects can use it to drag objects good now we are almost at the end of the lesson and we looked at pointing input devices their examples and their functions today we talked about input devices pointing and then data entry but the lesson focused on pointing pointing and in the pointing input devices we looked at the mouse see the mouse here with the left button the right button here the screw here we use the mouse to control the pointer on the screen and help us to execute or interact with the software that we are using we also talked about the touchpad used by netbooks and laptop computers we also looked at the track point or the pointing stick that is fixed on some keyboards I also looked at a trackball with a ball on top and I said the difference between the trackball and the mouse is that with a trackball the 
ball is visible but with the mouse the ball is under so you cannot see it also talked about the joystick using computer games the stylus that we use it with full screen computers also looked at light pen which we use to draw or write directly on the screen especially crt monitors so look that light gun for computer games laser pointer used for presentation we don't normally use it during presentation and then remote control which help us to interact or operate a device at a distance and lastly the game part that we use in computer games so viewers these are example of pointing input devices remember that we said that input devices feed data into the computer system as well as help us to interact with the computer system all these devices that we talked about today help us to interact with the computer system they don't feed data in our next lesson we will look at input devices that feed data into the system but today we looked at input devices that help us to interact with the computer system and these are the examples now let's test ourselves more on this lesson one the only difference between the mouse and a trackball lies in what is the difference between a mouse and a trackball and the answers are the difference lies in their width their size and thirdly, how the ball is moved. The difference between the mouse and the trackball. Good. The answer is how the ball is moved. With the mouse, the ball must move on a flat surface before the pointer on the screen can also move. But with the trackball, the trackball is stationary and then you just rotate the ball with your thumb. So how the ball is moved is one moves back and forth, but the other is stationary. The ball moves by rotating. Good. Two, which pointing device is also called a pen? Which pointing device is also called a pen? We have stylus, we have light pen, we have track points. Good. The answer is stylus. So stylus is also called a pen and we use it mainly with full screen tablets or computers. Three, a dash is a pointing device like a small rubber cap that sits on the keyboard above the B and between the G and H key. And what type of pointing device are we talking about? We have touchpad, we have pointing stick, we have trackball. Good. The answer is pointing stick. The answer is pointing stick. Four. A pointing device that can be used to draw directly on a computer screen is known as pointing device that we can use to draw directly on a computer screen. We have light gun, we have light pen, we have stylus. Good. The answer is light pen. Answer is light pen. Then five. Computer devices such as mouse, trackpad, and joystick are referred to as computer devices such as mouse, trackpad, and joystick are referred to as. We have data entry devices, we have pointing devices, we have non pointing devices. The answer is pointing devices. US, you have all done well. You have all done well. And before we leave, as usual, Let's take this assignment. One, what are pointing input devices? What are pointing input devices? Two, give four examples of pointing input devices. Give four examples of pointing input devices. And then three, state two functions of pointing input devices. Because I'll give you some few minutes to put this assignment down.
viewers, you are welcome back, and I believe you were all able to put the assignment down. Today we looked at ha some hardware components of the computer system, specifically input devices and pointing input devices, devices that allow us to interact with our computer system. In the next lesson, we will look at the other groups of input devices. Until we meet again next time, this is your ICT instructor, Ernest Atto Bento. Bye-bye.